coming to order and ask somebody to make a motion to go into executive session to discuss personnel matters per the standard language. I'll move that. Is there a second? Second. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 We, have to do, we have to do a roll call vote because of the um, fact that we're using Zoom. So Cliff, what is your vote? Aye. Rose? Aye. Sharon? Aye. John? I, I had to step away. What am I voting on? You're voting to go into executive session, but oh, because, oh, because yeah. of the new uh, changes to the open meeting law, we have to do roll call. And okay. I assume that during this motion that we've invited Toby Talbot, our operations manager, to join us. Okay, I'm not seeing him, but okay. He's got a little dog with a hat. You probably won't see him until he talks. Okay. Toby, can you say hi? Yep, hi, John. Uh, okay, hey. Got him now? Yeah, my visual is different. I only have four screens here. I don't know what happened. Here. John, if you go to the upper right-hand corner. Oh, there we go, I'm sorry, there you go. Okay, got it, Cliff. Now you okay. got the Brady Bunch view. So, um, Toby raised a concern, and rightly so, that did we have a backup plan if Alfred decides not to come back? His due date to come back is April 6th. I have not talked to him. I did call. Um, Rose has confirmation from somebody that he is, in fact, back in town. Right, Rose? Well, he was when I spoke to um, Ian Voyer. Um, who actually rents a room from him or an apartment or something that's attached to his house or his barn. And um, this goes back probably two weeks. Yeah, um, okay. He was back in town at that point. So here's, given the current situation where people that had carpentry jobs lined up to have people come into their homes and do work, I have heard from several that people are okay. All right. So now we just sit and look at Toby's little Dalmatian and hat. Can I get a background even though I don't have a picture? No, it, you need your camera to be functional for the background thing to work. Oh my gosh. So John, I determined that um, Denise's computer does have a USB port so she might be able to use that Logic Tech yeah. camera Oh, good. You just have to work out a way to hand it off to her. That should be simple. We can enough. do the, we can do the football throw. Yeah. Well, I'll get it. All right, a, a drive by, a drive by, and you can throw it in my window. We could do that. Twenty-four hours on your porch. Right. Okay. So I want to play a game with all you people who have video. Are you got your pajama bottoms on or dress up clothes? I'm, I'm in my office. <laughs> oh, you got your sweaties on. Not me. Not you? No, I got my black slacks on. Oh, okay. I couldn't tell. Rose, you got your jammies on? No, nope, not at all. I'm all dressed, but I can't lift my legs. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's black pants. Okay. <laughs> What about you, Cliff? You got your jammies on? No, I'm just sitting here in my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we don't need to see that. Toby, how about you? Yep, sweatpants. Okay, John? Got my jeans. Okay. And I have Ruby on my lap who's trying to watch the screen. She's very interested. And she's very clingy the last few days. I don't know what's up. If uh, I'm not... If I'm not moving, she wants to sit on my lap. Well, our animals definitely sense the uh, stress level and they're responding in kind. So she's probably picking up on that. Could be. Mm. Could be. I think Betsy is loving it. I don't think she senses any stress at all. She's just absolutely thrilled that people are home all the time. Did you, get, <laughs> did you guys see the thing? I, I posted a thing, I'll have to send it around. It's a picture of this dog up on top, up on standing on top of the kitchen cupboards. And the guy says, you know, 
The dog says, no, I'm not coming down. I've been walked by every effing person in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, Barbara has joined us. I will unmute. Barbara, you should be able to speak and we'll be able to hear you. Okay, I'm not hearing you. I'm not seeing. Does she have video? No, she's just on right now as a black screen with her name. Okay, I can see Barbara. So Barbara, you might need to check your microphone settings, make sure it's turned on. Um, okay, I see it's muted. Go ahead and try toggling it again, see if you can unmute it. Yeah, press the space bar, Barbara. No, that's not happening. Do you know if she's doing it on phone or on computer? It looks like she's trying to do it from computer. From Barbara to everyone, I can hear you. Okay. But can you, can you talk, Barbara? Can you say something or not? No, she, we're not hearing her. She can hear us, but uh, we are not hearing her. So, Barbara, can you use the chat function and tell us whether or not you're doing it on computer or by phone? I just sent her a text and asked her the same question. Yeah, she's on her computer. She can hear us all. But we just can't hear her. So, Barbara, if you have something you need to jump in with, I guess you'll have to do it via text. Or via, the t or via chat. Yep, right. chat. Okay. <laughs> While we're doing that, I'm going to try and do something else here. Make sure this is going to work for everyone. Okay, I think this might be. Is that Judy? Sandra, is that you? That is me. Okay, let me. Uh, I'm going to change your name so people know it's you. Do you want me to? No, oh, you're okay. And. Okay, so we can't see you, Sandra, but we can hear you. Everybody hear Sandra okay? Yep, hear her. Is yeah, I hear her. Oh, there, there you, there you, you are. are. Now we can see you. There you are. Hi. Hello, everybody. Barbara is here as well, but we can't hear her, but she can hear us. Katie has just joined us. Hey, Katie. Let me think. Katie, if you hold down the space bar and talk, we'll be able to hear you. Oh. And Judy's uh -huh. popped on. There's Judy. And Judy, you if you hold, hold down, down your space bar. Yep, can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Judy, hold down your space bar. Hello. Oh, there you are. Oh, I don't know how to send it. Is Toby <laughs> still? Oh, there's Toby. Okay. Um, <laughs> do we expect, I mean, I thought Jerome was coming back, but I guess we'll just let him come back when he comes back. Yeah, um, we've got the recording going, so I will be able to provide him with that in an editable form so that he can use his third-party software and uh, actually post it, much like he does the videos when we're holding regular meetings. So in order to speak, you have to hold down the space bar. And then over on the right-hand side, um, and I don't see it right now, Cliff, but there should be a button you can press to, to wave your to raise your hand you were going to 
Were you going to do something, Cliff, so that would work? Uh, I've set Denise up as a co-host, so if you use the raise your hand feature, she'll be able to see that you have your hand raised. If that's not working for you, you can simply just raise your hand in front of your camera. Right. Okay. And so, just to clarify, um, members of the select board, I do not have you automatically muted. You can mute yourself, or if you need to speak, you don't have to hold down the space bar. Okay. Good to know. Are we ready to get started? We just came out of executive session and had nothing to report. Um, so we wanted to give Toby an opportunity to give us an update since it's been a while since we've hadn't been able to have a meeting. And just so folks remember, with the change to the open meeting law, we have to take a roll call vote on everything. So Toby, do you wanna give us an update? Um, the guys are um, working well under the conditions of coronavirus. I've provided them with gloves and antibacterial stuff. We've had a couple of staff meetings so they all understand uh, risk and what's going on. For the most part, they are an essential, um, essential workforce. Um, for the most part, they don't have any public contact. They're avoiding public contact at home. So I think we can operate sort of as a isolated unit and continue to do what we're doing. Um, pretty much winter, although I'm looking out the window and it's snowing, so. Right. But most of the plowing I think is pretty much done. So we are really in the season of repairing the roads after winter and dealing with mud season. So Cliff, I can't see everybody. I don't know what you changed, but now I can't see everybody. Just put the agenda up. I'll pull that off and uh, you can see everybody again. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so the road crew isn't feeling like they're in a place of, um, where they're, they're concerned about the safety of their health. Um, for the most part, not, but they're cautious. Um, you know, they, they, Ask for gloves, I got them gloves. I brought antibacterial stuff if they want to spray on stuff. They're trying not to share trucks, so only one guy is using one truck. Uh, Good. So they don't cross-contaminate. Yep. Um, I think they're all <clears throat> much on top of infection control for themselves. And again, we don't really have much contact with the outside world um, and we'll just keep our distances. And I assume when the gravel pits open, or they're going, the gravel pits will be an essential element of what is considered an essential business to be open. Yeah, they're already open and they're staying open. Okay, very good. And I know anything to do with equipment, like car parts and um, repair shops and stuff like that, are considered essential. So if we have any of those issues, that's not a worry. Yeah, I don't think there's any real downside to what the stay at home uh, issue and the you know, businesses closed for the road crew at this point. Okay, very good. Anything else under operations you want to tell us about or ask us about or anything? Um, no, um, it seems like um, dealing with the paychecks and the bills and getting orders to you guys is working out okay, even though yep. no one, even though we're not de dealing with getting to the town office. Now, did did you did Jacob get his check that was lost or replaced? Uh, yeah, I went and picked up the check from Sandra today and gave it to Jake. So he still has not received his check in the mail. The other two did. The other two guys got their check. Hmm. So it's just a post office issue, probably. <coughs> yeah. Well, and we've had this several times, not with road crew checks, because they were picking them up in person, but other mail that came up missing. Um, so did you resolve that? Is, are they just going to come and pick up their checks off the little table now? Well, I'm not sure how that's going to work, because um, Sandra doesn't come in until Thursday late in the day, and she would have to, you know, um, they would, you know, if they were leaving early or whatever, they wouldn't get their checks. So I'm going to check with them tomorrow to see if we'll keep trying on this mailing thing. And it, if it clears up, then that would be fine. If it continues to be missing, missing paychecks, then we'll have to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, I think it was, 
you know, a bit of a challenge, and Sandra can speak to this if she wants, to get Jacob a different check, or a replacement check. Uh, and, well, she can speak to it. My understanding was that she just called Nemrick and they told her how to do it and it was put right out and it's not a big issue. Um, the, the problem is, is we had to wait three or four days to see if it was coming in the mail. And I think that was a mis not a mistake, but we ought to, if it happens again, we ought to just do a replacement check right away. Um, if the check does show up in the mail for him, I, w I told him to return it to us so we don't have to put a stop payment on the check. Right. Well, and this is another opportunity where if everybody was on direct deposit, this wouldn't be an issue. Well, that's neither here nor there. Yep. So something to think about when we're redoing some different things is that, you know, this is a good opportunity to point out that this wouldn't have been such an issue and Jacob wouldn't have been frantic about, you know, needing his paycheck, obviously, to live on. Yep, you can take that up <coughs> with the road crew when you talk to them. Yep, and I'm sure we will. Um, what else? So aren't the guys still working Fridays so that if Sandra left the checks on the table, they could come pick it up on Friday morning? No, we just we just switched over to the, the springtime uh, four days a week. Why did I think that that didn't happen until later? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's easier for them now to get uh, more work done in a day and have that Friday off. Hmm. Okay. Anybody have Tob any other questions for Toby? Yeah, Toby. <laughs> Is that not something that gets discussed with the, the select board? I thought it was something we did all, I mean, it's what we do every year. Uh, I, you know, if you guys want to have some input on it, we can change it. It's fine. That's just, it's, it's that's, that's the way we've always done it. Is that is what you're saying? That's correct. Right. I think I'd yeah. have to go. I have to go back and look. I want to go back and look at the what, personnel the personnel policy to see what we've said about when when things switch over. I was thinking it wasn't now. I thought I was thinking it was later in April sometime. I will go back and look at the personnel policy, John. To Toby, uh, what what was is the customary uh, switch date to the summer hours? schedule i don't know i mean historically it's changed you know a week here or a week there i don't think there's a date in 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 writing so how did it happen this year the guys notified you or oh no they did they we discussed it and they said you know is you know this is time for us to change this you know we're ready to, to you know to change the work schedule because of what they're doing you know and it's not it's like the plow sanding season is over, so there's no reason for them to be in on Friday if they don't need to be there if they're getting the work done. Right, except for mud season, we don't know with the rain and everything. For instance, I, I noticed that the roads are not getting quite so beat up because there's almost no traffic on the right. roads. So that's right. a plus. That's a plus. Then, then also noticed in the last two days, all this rain has resulted in these roads that were like in amazing shape. To, to degrading to the point where they're really getting potholed again as if they had a lot of traffic all due to the weather shift i just hope that they right can. and there's again every time you, the weather changes the roads change and we respond as much as we can i mean i'd love to fix the potholes right now but the rain is you know you can't grade in the rain because you just create a mud slick and it's worse than ice so Essentially, you just have to live with the weather and take advantage of when you can do work on the roads, depending on a window. Um, you know, if I grade one day and it rains the next day, you all know what happens. So there is, you know, there is some conditions where we just can't fix them right now. I guess I'd have to go back and look at the minutes to see when they went back to the four day work week last year. Um, I'm looking at the personnel policy, a hard copy of it right now, and I don't see that we have a definite time set for going off. I know usually they go on winter hours, um, right after, like, beginning of November, I want to say. Denise, is that schedule even in our personnel policy, or is no, that just... No, I don't, I don't see it. 
I don't think so. I think I think that it's the way it's the way we've always done it. And when I when I say that, in case you guys don't know me well enough, when I say things like, "Oh, that's the way we've always done it," um, I we say get it, with Sharon. Great disdain. <laughs> that's not a reason. No, we get it. Um, and I know that that is something that has come up in our other venue about when that begins and starts. I've seen it there, I think. Rose? Rose, you want to talk? You got a pressure space bar. You got to keep your space bar held down well, while you talk. Rose is not a space bar person. You got to unmute yours, Rose. Down right. Okay. Bottom that, left. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. I'm on an iPhone. Oh. Um, can you hear me? Yep. I just want to say that um, I was surprised to hear Toby say that they went to the four day work week. Um, I think that it should have been something that um, when Alfred returned on April 6th, it should have been discussed at that point. Um, it clearly is not summer hours, weather and conditions at this point. Um, and even if they can't run a grader because the roads are too muddy, there's still covered culverts that could get clean, brush that could get trimmed. Um, there's lots of other work that could get done. Um, and in my view, I think that they should immediately go back to five days a week. Um, we're, we're nowhere near that time in my view of um, establishing a four day week. I think that there's too much spring work that needs to get done. Yeah, I mean, I, it's my recollection, they've never gone on summer hours this early in the season, ever. I think they're taking advantage of the opportunity, shall I say. Agreed. This would be something that would be good to have Alfred weigh in on and let us know when it, what has historically occurred, that there's no institutional memory other than Alfred. No, uh, I, think, I, think, I think Katie could probably look it up in the minutes go back and, and look Sandra, at the last couple of minutes from the last couple of years in this time period. And Sandra could look at the payroll, the yes. time cards. Yep, that's true too. Yep. Okay. Well, we'll deal with that issue. Any further thoughts on that issue? Are you ready to move on to shed curb cuts? I'm ready to move on. Okay. Hang on. Are we expecting Toby to dial it back? John, somebody requested that, but I want to, I want to replay whoever that came from. Are we actually formally I, I, making I, that request? I, I think that we should have a, a off, offline conversation in executive session. This becomes a personnel matter. Yep. This, this is a broader audience. Than yep. Fair enough. And uh, just let, just let me know what you decide so I can do whatever you decide. Okay. Well, we Thank might want to call you back in, Toby. Well, I'll be asleep by then. <laughs> no, we're we're going to get through the agenda quick this time. We're you not going to we're going to only stick to agenda items. Cuz we don't want to be on Zoom all night. Um can I, I bring up bring up one other subject that's yeah, not Yeah. Yeah. So I've been uh, working with John McCullough at the town hall and um, we need, I think we need to get uh, monitoring at the fire alarm panel. So if there is anything that happens when no one's in the building, it dials out. And I've talked with Mountain View Security who does the security and fire at the town garage and they've given me a proposal uh, to implement that service at the town hall for $30 a month and $21 for testing and inspection annually. So it's $21 annually for inspection? No, it's 21 a month. So it would be $51 a month to include monthly, mo I mean, monitoring all year round and an annual inspection and test. And that's Mountain View? Correct. Um, How do folks feel about voting on that? It's not something that we have on the agenda. We could agree to it and then the next agenda we could put it on for an official vote. I think I would hate to see the town hall burn down. John? I, I John? guess I don't understand. Maybe I missed something here. Uh, 
we have an alarm system in that building now that these folks would be connected to. Right. So, so the electrician put in a fire alarm system, but it's only an alarm for people in the building. It doesn't dial out. It, it can dial out, but that's not, that hasn't been instituted. So the electrical contractor put the panel in with all the alarm and pole stations, but it's not connected to anything outside. So this is the next step in that process. And does this alarm system, does the sensor, do the sensors have smoke sensors and heat sensors or what? Yeah, both. I mean, the reason I ask is if it's a heat sensor, you might as well not dial anyone because then the thing's done. That's all. All right, so do we want to authorize this and then officially vote on it at the next meeting or what do you want to do? I had a question. Yes. Toby, are they the only game in town or they're the most uh, widely used in this area? Um, I'm if you want me to get competitive pricing, I can. I just went to them because they're already providing service to the town garage. Do we get any kind of discount if they're doing both places? No. And we don't have this, we don't have this function at the town office. We do not. Does it make sense to have it at the town office? Well, at the town office, all you have now is smoke detectors in the ceiling. Um, and so, you would have to you would have to install a whole panel and, oh, I see. and all the rest in order to make it a dial out. And okay. they can put that in, but I just don't, I don't have an idea what that total cost of the installation is. Well, we can put that on our list of things to check out, maybe. Yeah, you know, I guess I guess I'd like to have a broader conversation about need at this point. I, I don't I don't know what the fire risk is, given that the building's been upgraded. It's got a Propane fired heating system that's, I think, sitting on a concrete slab. I just don't, I think, if anything, the level of risk has been reduced. Um, I just got to, I want to process this a little bit. I, okay, that's fine. I'm just, I'm just reporting to you what I discovered. The, and uh, I'm, the building's you know, I'm insured. Not that we want it to burn down, but I just don't. So we can put it on a future agenda, John. Yeah, I, I think let's have a little. I'm really getting worried about expenses about everything now with this this corona thing has really hit me between the eyes and I'm feeling for our residents' futures here big time. Yep. No, I agree. We've got to really tighten our belts. Well, the only thing I could suggest you'd ask DLCT that if they can change if if the dial out system will change the insurance rating at all. Yeah, we could ask them that. That's a free free question to ask. Katie's making a note, right, Katie? Okay. All right. So we'll we'll put this on the shelf and discuss it later, get some more information. Um, shed curb cut. Toby, you went and looked at it? Yep, I've been to the site. Um, it's got line of sight, no problem, and it's gonna need a 15 inch uh, driveway culvert. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it sounds like there's good sight distances based on the application. That's correct. Yep. Um, okay, the only thing I don't have here, which I can get, and I didn't think to do it today, was to print off the um, approval form. So I'll have to get that. Select board, do you have any questions for, for Toby about the curb cut? Did you look at the drawing and all that stuff or have any questions put up on I'm the sure. screen if people need to see it everybody's is everybody got to need to see it or are you good i'm good okay sharon sharon yeah i'm good okay john same here cliff i'm good okay so would somebody like to make a motion to approve the shed curb cut on Sand Hill Road with the caveat that it needs a 15 inch culvert and authorize me to sign the form on behalf of the board. So moved. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Cliff? Aye. Sharon? Aye. John? Aye. Rose? Aye. Okay, so it is done. 
Um, somewhere along the way, the VTrans 2020 Highway Mileage Certificate um, didn't happen. And we need to do that tonight so that we can get funding from VTrans for our roads. You want to explain everybody, Toby, again, what this, what this means to the town? It hasn't changed from what it looks like from last year, so. <clears throat> it's just an annual, uh, annual form that informs the VTrans whether we've added or subtracted roads in town. Um, and nothing has changed, so it's just a formality to sign it and send it back to them. Yeah, and this is something that we've done historically every year. And I think the only time it might have changed is if we had um, a road we might have discontinued a piece of or something like that that was a town road. I think that happened the last time when it was um, Wayne Morse. I had a question. Yes. Um, hey, Scott. On this, I, I had a question. Yes. On the um, highway mileage certificate, Toby, um, is are, is the town required to list on the bottom some of the major projects that they're going to use the state aid to highways, um, which projects they're going to be working on? Um, I, I don't see it on here, Rose. Okay. It's in I the, know years ago they did that. It's in the, um, if you want to look at it later, it's in the Google folder. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right. Somebody want to make Actually, Rose, I think what you're thinking of is the annual town plan for highways that okay. has the projects. And that does have a place on the bottom for us to put that information. And this is just to, do, just to affirm that there's been no changes in the mileage in town. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So this gets signed by me. And then I guess it has, I guess, Judy, it has to get signed by you too. So what I can do is if we approve this is sign it and leave it in an envelope on that little table when I stop in to pick up the orders. And that way I won't have to go in the building. Okay, would somebody like to make a motion to approve the VTrans 2020 Highway Mileage of Certificate and authorize uh, me and Judy to sign and submit it? So move. Second, John second. Okay, roll call vote, Cliff? Aye. Sharon? I didn't hear you. Sorry, aye. John? Aye. Rose? Aye. And I'm saying aye. All right, so it shall be. All right, hey Scott, thanks for joining us. You have to press. Yep, yeah, thank you. All right, uh, next up, um, I want to make sure that we give Sandra and Judy sufficient time to give us updates. A lot's happened in the last few weeks with the change in working remotely, um, coverage in the office, those kinds of things. So Sandra, would you like to go first? You got, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Sandra, we can't hear you. We got to press space bar. Oh, wait. There you go. There you go. All right. Now we got you. There, there was a, an icon at the left hand of my screen that I had to push as well. Hi, everybody. Um, How are you feeling? I'm okay. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Everybody's healthy at your house? At, everybody is healthy. Good. Glad to hear it. Me too. So uh, what we have, what I have done uh, is move my office to my home and that is where I'm working from. And I have to say that uh, the first week it did require uh, a lot of adjustment to figure out how to create the systems here that I had in place uh, at the office, and I feel that, that that process is complete. I have run orders, I have run payroll, and in fact today, uh, as it turns out, in order to reproduce a check for Jacob, 
Nimric was actually able to remote in while I was remoting into our server to make some adjustments in the Nimric and three Nimric uh, soft, uh, soft, um, software modules. So I wondered how that would work or if it could work and now we know it can. So um, financially getting the payroll out, getting our vendors paid is rolling along normally. There's been no delays or hiccups. Uh, we will, as Toby said, we will continue to mail paychecks. However, if we see that the mail is unreliable, then we will go to a plan B. Um, so I actually, I think, you know, from my standpoint, my work is continuing on as always, but from here, uh, the server is slower. So I, the work takes longer and there is a lot of information that continues to flow through, um, the listserv and even amongst ourselves over the weekend. So I am typically on the uh, treasurer's email and responding on Saturdays and Sundays, which is not normal, but under these circumstances probably is normal, is the new norm. Um, do you want to go to Judy to give an update on how her end of things are going? Or do you want me to just go into a treasurer's report? Well, I think um, we don't obviously want you to continue to have to work Saturdays and Sundays. So we have to figure that out. I mean, it's what's it been? Has it been two weeks or does it seem longer than that? I think it's been two weeks, right? Well, it's, it's not really it. There's just a lot of information that is flowing with new orders from the governor that impact how our municipalities work. I think that these things will slow down over time, but yeah. it, it just is what is, as I said, it's kind of the new norm now. I'm not the only person on um, internet now at, yeah. in terms of municipal employees. I don't think it's odd. It just happened to be that way these last couple of weeks. Oh, so the other, the other um, piece of working from home has been this. I come in on Thursday afternoons, um, at this point, I was coming in at 4, 4.30, uh, but we have switched office hours around and I'm coming in now, I will be coming in now around 2.30. And the purpose of that is to pick up checks for deposits. So that's, that's the other piece of what I have been able to keep going. And that is to continue to deposit checks that we're receiving. And so what I want to do uh, for the first couple of weeks, just because of the way the scheduling worked out, I had to bring the checks home, no cash. I had to bring the checks home. And then in the morning on Friday, I would deposit them. So, so uh, that, are you going to do that differently now? Yes, I'm going to come in at 2.30 on Thursdays instead of at 4.30. Yeah. See, Barbara was working until four o'clock. So she's working until two o'clock now. So I'll be coming in at 2.30, doing my filing and so forth, and then picking up the checks for deposit and depositing them on Thursday night before the bank closes. So that's the only, that was uh, the most, that's been the final tweak in, to my routine in, and that had most, uh, mostly that had to do with how we were viewing the staffing of the office to keep it safe for all of us. Yeah. Um, Judy, do you want to weigh in at this point? Sure. Can you hear me? Yep. Rose, you're, ha you're upside down. <laughs> you might have to turn your phone. Hey, Rose, your phone. Turn your phone. There you are. <laughs> Isn't this fun? I, my whole connect, my whole connection ended. Oh. Okay, I go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead Judy. Here. Okay. Um, I was just reflecting that on March 3rd was town meeting, which seems like a million years ago. Um, yes, it does. 
I left for a vacation on March 6th to Washington, D.C. and Virginia, which I, at two days in, immediately realized was a big mistake and hopped into a rental car and zoomed home. Um, and then at that point started setting up remote uh, working from the office. So I have not been into the office since March 4th or 5th or so, I don't, so, you know, that first week. So it's a little disorienting to not have been in the office that long. Although I think we've done a really good job working through the numerous emails related to statute changes and addendums and governmental, you know, uh, announcements and, um, and all the changes that need to take place to, to uh, you know, meet the needs of this crisis. Um, so I think what we're doing is kind of a week by week uh, assessment of what needs to happen. And the first, whatever this has been, two weeks, um, has been, um, we've set it up that Barbara has been in the office. Uh, the first week she was in a lot, like, I don't know if it was 30 hours or what. Um, and then we realized, let's let's dial that back to her normal 20 hours a week. So now she, our, our agreement was to for her to be in the office from nine to two uh, to collect the mail and answer the phone and scan things and 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 I would sort of remotely ask ask her to do things that needed to be done or vice versa. So um, that's how we've done it, like this past week. Um, at this point, I'm 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 not feeling that I'm as set up as maybe Sandra is. Um, the, the piece that's not getting done is records recording, um, which if that accumulates for too long, there'll be such a backlog that it will be a problem for the uh, election in August, which may take a lot of extra effort because it may be all mail. Um, so <clears throat> I'm Sandra and Barbara and I are, are in conversation about how to remedy that because um, I do have teenagers in the household. They're occasionally going off and hanging out with friends. And so it, there's not as much control over my potential exposure as other people perhaps, and particularly Barbara who lives alone. So we're considering possibly an, a week on week off for me and Barbara so I could get in there and do that. Um, and just sorting out how to make that really safe. Um, just some updates on things that I've done. I've, I've tried to add a lot to the website so that researchers and lawyers can access a lot of um, information that they need on the website. So that's as loaded as it can be. Um, and uh, I've, with your approval, purchased a large new Dropbox that is, will, can take larger packages and ballots and, um, you know, once you put, once they put it in, they can't take it back out and we would have a key to access. It's a you know, a $500 steel drop box rather than that funky little thing we have in the mailroom. So I think that will lead to a more secure transaction of packages and legal documents and paychecks and all of that. Um, uh, is, that, is, that, is that lock box just for drop off? So the, yes. mail, the mail people wouldn't access our mail to drop, mm -hmm. to pick it up from that lock box? No, we would still use the regular mailbox at the end of the driveway. This would be just a kind of a drop off pick up, you know, drop off um, in the mail room, okay. in the mud room. Would the, would the post office drop our mail in that box or only in the one at the end of the driveway? Only at the one in the end of the driveway. So any mail going out, any mail coming in would go strictly in the one that's still there. Right. Okay. Right. There's some things on the list of non-essential, you know, when we look over what they've decided is absolutely essential work. And for example, they say that marriage and birth certificates are not essential work, but we're realizing that people need health care. And once a baby's born, they, the parents need the certificate to enlist in health care. And if somebody's married, they need the marriage license to get health care. So that, right. you know, that's obviously still an essential process. Um, and when you say they, you mean Secretary of State's office, right? Right. Uh, I don't know who exactly 
makes the long list of what's essential and what's not essential. I imagine it's a collaboration between various governmental departments, but, um, but uh, some things you just have to decide on your own whether yeah. it's essential or not. Yeah. So um, I don't know if there's questions. Um, I'll, I'll just stop. Okay. Anybody have questions about the lockbox or the office hours staffing? I think it makes sense for Judy to still, for Judy and Barbara to one week on, one week off so that some of these other things don't get so far behind that Judy can never get caught up. Cliff? Uh, I didn't have a question per se. I did have a comment. Uh, I wanted to thank Sandra and Judy and Barbara for all the extra effort and the extra stress that you're experiencing. I really appreciate that. and um, Thank you for your efforts and know that we're here. If there's anything at all that we can do to help relieve some of the stress, just let us know. I know everybody who's part of this meeting will gladly jump in any way they can. So well, thank you. And I, would, I would second Cliff's thank you because I think we've been working as a team. Cliff, thank you very much for all your efforts with all of the IT stuff. That's been a huge help. Um, it's, it's been a real team effort. I have to say everybody's stepped up to the plate offers for help have come in from everywhere you can imagine. It's very heartwarming. Oh, thank, thank you for your support. I think uh, everything that we've done has been, in fact, a role model for other towns because we really acted quickly. And um, we've heard a lot of feedback that uh, we kind of set, set the tone for other towns. Yeah, we did. I had a lot of comments. Um, especially if like even from East Montpelier who used us as a role model for how they went forward. Woodbury did as well, Plainfield. So we, we, set, the, we set the standard and we set the, set the bar. So any other th questions for Judy? Um, I know Sandra has more information to talk to us about regarding town finances. Um, I imagine we're going to have to tighten our belts and pull up our britches. Is that my re -entry? That's your cue. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't think anyone has a crystal ball at this point in time. Uh, but what I would like to say uh, is uh, if we were simply going over the February treasurer's report, I would say, hey, we're in great shape. We have a good fund balance. We're going into the last um, quarter of the year right on target. And all of that is true, even with the outstanding 2019 um, taxes, which were close to $100,000. I, I still felt fairly confident that at, at the end of February, we were gonna be fine. So the landscape has changed somewhat, but it has changed in a way that we can't really predict. Um, and so what I would say at this point is this, we do have a good fund balance. And I think um, we will get through FY20 and not be in a loss. Where we may get tripped up is in FY21. Um, and that does remain to be seen. Be, and some of that will be impacted by how the state is able to calculate the education tax rate. And I don't really mean how, but when. When will they calculate it and download it to us? We cannot send out tax bills without it. So we're on a holding pattern at this point to wait and see. BLCT has a survey going around to get a sense for what um, immediate needs towns have in terms of borrowing. We, we do not need to take out a loan in anticipation of taxes. Our taxes, our tax collection effort is behind us, unlike some towns who are just about to collect their last and final tax payment for FY20. So we're in good shape when it comes to that. 
what I might ask, or what I will ask the select board to do is to have some discussion uh, and decide whether it is, uh, whether they think it prudent to um, look at what we are spending and whether or not unbudgeted expenditures and look very carefully at unbudgeted expenditures. And I realize that's right on the heel of discussing this lockbox and the security system for the town hall. And I, you know, I have to tell you that I'm in favor of the lockbox. We should have had that years ago. I don't think that is uh, a knee jerk reaction to the event that we find ourselves in at this point in time. And then it's up to the select board, of course, to decide about the security system for the town hall. Keep in mind that that's a $600 um, expenditure. And Annually. We'll have to figure that out. So I think it's important that we look very carefully at all, that all departments look very carefully at what they are spending at this point in time. And, um, and I, I think every town is feeling the same way. So um, two areas that I will affect our fiscal <laughs> position, and that is receipt of the outstanding 2019 taxes. At this point, as of today, there's uh, 90, 90, roughly $91,000 outstanding. And I, at, <laughs> You know, two weeks ago, I would have every reason to expect most of that to be in by the end of the fiscal year. I do not know how that is going to look. Uh, the other part of this uh, revenue question is, of course, how long will folks be out of work <clears throat> and will they be able to make their first tax payment? We will have to wait and see. Again, we have a pretty good fund balance to rely upon. Uh, we may we may see a cash flow issue or not later in FY21. So um, I just we're going to have to wait and see. With do, regard Sandra, to, Sandra, yes. can I ask you a question? Sure. So do we think that it's it could be that we'll be delayed in sending out tax bills? That seems to be possible. The um, the extension of time for filing the income tax returns and homestead declaration ha has been extended, as you know, to July 15th from April 15th. So my question, I posed this question to Carol Dawes, who is the legislative representative for the Clerks and Treasurers Association, that if, we, if all the budgets are set, and all the grand lists are set, which is most likely to be the case in our school district, why wouldn't we at the very least be able to get our educational tax rate downloaded to us? They did it piecemeal last year. Why, why wouldn't we expect that to happen this year? And she said that there are other moving parts, and one of which is that the base tax rate has to be set by the state, and that won't be set until they, they set their budget. And the COVID-19 has been a great distraction from that process. So there are, move, and there are other variables. So we just don't know. I am hoping if we get that tax rate by August, it will only take, you know, I would probably ask the select board to come in for a special meeting, set our town tax rate as quickly as possible and get those bills out. And I think we could probably do that in about eight days. Um, it, there's a lot of processing or processing, special processing of a few hundred bills due to escrow requests and uh, multiple owners that hold us up a day or two, but we may just simply see our first tax collection date at the end of September instead of the beginning, which is not a dramatic problem. Um, our second tax date, of course, is set. November 16th, it was set at town meeting and we cannot change that. 
the latitude we have and the tax, uh, the first tax collection date is the only date that can be responsive to this current event and the change in uh, income tax filing deadline. So again, um, what is the consequence of that? Cash flow, obviously. And, um, and there was one other consequence. Yes, revised tax bills. So we probably had 100 revisions this year. And under this process, um, I know the Carol Dawes, again, the representative of the Clerk and Treasurer's Association has requested that the legislature download a final tax rate and don't do an estimated tax rate and then download a, a final tax rate, which would require two bills to go out that would be very confusing for taxpayers and a difficulty in the collection process. So um, what I'm hoping is that we get one tax bill and we'll just have more revised tax bills. So we had 100 this year, we might have 300. We'll be busy, but from my point of view, I, I would rather see, um, see that than us, than our first tax payment be delayed much beyond the end of September. Again, I, I just, we just, the information is not out there. So John has a question. Yeah. Uh, so Sandra, I don't know if this is appropriate to ask you at this time, but um, with regard to this year's education, um, sorry, school tax, uh, Calus school tax, um, how much of an increase are we seeing on a hundred thousand dollar house? Do you know it's, I, I, you know? I can get back to you. I cannot, I don't know that off the top of my head. Okay. I just don't, I don't know that off the top of my head. Because this is the year where that $2.2 .2 million liability kicks in, if I'm correct. Yeah, well, it, that's true. So well, the uh, district did estimate the tax rate it's in our town report. I, I will get back to you, John. I will try and tease out those numbers. It, it just, I, it would just take me more time than it would be worth, I think, to do it at this point, but I'll email you with that. So as anyway, we're, um, I'm sorry, you wanted to say something more on that? So um, this also affects our uh, federal and uh, state government and you know we have to wonder about grant reimbursements and state aid to highway and how fluid the state government is is going to be when it too is facing a potential cash flow crunch in FY21 and uh, well, there, the yeah there's some there's something I wanted to bring up in that regard is grants did you guys, did you speak with Toby about the not, large grant? Not so, yet. We wanted to do it when you were on board. Um, I think I'm, con I'm just concerned that we don't know what's going to happen with the federal government, with state government, with finances, stock market, all these factors that are out there flying around that we won't even know probably for six months how that's all going to land out. And my concern is, and I want to talk to Toby about this and get his input, and for the select board to think about this, does it make sense to take on the liability of, say, a $150,000 grant? We have to spend the money first and, that get, and then get reimbursed. My concern is, and I'm not being a, a sky's falling person, but what if we can't get reimbursed for that amount of money, 80%? That well, would put us in a really tough position. I spoke to Toby about that briefly. I wasn't sure if you folks were going to talk to him and I wanted to hear some of his ideas. I, I don't like paraphrasing or speaking for him, but the- He's he's on so he can speak. Oh, hey, Toby. Yeah. Oh, well then good. You can answer that question. I, I would just simply say, Toby and I were thinking that any expenses incurred in connection with that large highway grant, we would not pay until we were into FY21 with the expectation of getting the reimbursement in FY21. But, but 
where would that that but that money comes from the feds through the state correct no it comes from the state but doesn't the state get the money from somewhere um i, I can't tell you if there's a, a tie into the structures grant if it's federal or not or if it's just the state um state income okay, okay. like i said i don't want to be a negative nelly or the sky is falling but what if the state falls on some really hard times and that highway money isn't available Winnie, be quiet. Yeah, I can't. I can't answer that. I can talk to Shauna and find out if you know what the guarantee is as far as reimbursement goes, but or where the where the um, the source of funds for structure grants comes from. If it's all if it's all state um, tax money or if it's federal grants that come into the state, I, I frankly don't know the pathway. Well, so we. So, we, select board members, do you want to weigh in? Oh, John. Yes, one does. Um, so we enter into a contractual agreement with the state, you know, the whole share agreement and all that. So the state is contractually obligated. That said, I know there's been a discussion at the national level, um, for instance, with the airlines, the airlines union is very concerned that, for instance, the airlines could use uh, the threat of bankruptcy as a rationale to uh, have through the uh, the court system have their op contractual obligations eliminated or, or pared back. Um, and some years ago in 2009, when we were in that 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 financial crisis, um, which may be may pale in comparison to where where we're heading, it seems. Um, back then, there was some discussion of of federal legislation to add a chapter to the bankruptcy laws to allow municipalities, state, and even federal government to, uh, through that process, uh, wriggle their way out of contractual obligations, any and all, under this, this proposed change to the bankruptcy law. So I, I just want to so put what that, does that there. So what does that mean, John? Well, for instance, let's just use this as a scenario. We. I think there's a, the road projects on Pekin Brook we're looking at as one of them, am I right? Uh, George Road. George Road, that's right. Um, so let's say we enter into contract with the state and our state says we are on the brink of bankruptcy. Um, well, let's just say, this is of course crazy, but we're in crazy times. So if that federal law were to pass or there was a like-wise state law, um, the state could go through a process that would be in that law change uh, that made available in that law change to um, be able to escape its contractual obligations as may be determined by in by the federal bankruptcy court and so we would then have to go to court to try as one of the uh folks parties that the state is indebted to and and try to see what we can get and we may in bankruptcy court the way it works out is they look at the financial wherewithal of the party filing to make good on their obli contractual obligations. Um, and the court can award a percentage of ob obligation to be <coughs> um, based on the, the parties, the filing parties financial condition. So if the state said we're really hurting <coughs> that, you know, folks in old age homes and social services and roads and everything else, and we can't, meet all our obligations immediately, they could, the court could say, well, you can make payments to the town of Cowles over a number of years, or you, you only have to honor 50% of your originally contracted obligation, et cetera. That's just something I, I, I think about. I, it's a long ways down the road, very long ways. I, I don't know if that's a concern for this year, but it may be down the road. For um, FY21. So John, as far right. as I understand- I mean, 2022. Um, so just to give you, my perception of this, we have already signed a grant document with the state. So we are already in a contract with them to do this job. And it extends until December 2020 to get it completed. And then we would ask for reimbursement after that. So I believe that the structure grant funds are available from prior years, not from or, or from whatever year that we signed the grant in, not future shortfalls. So the question is, is that, 
is that encumbered funds that no matter what happens to the state later that they just can't touch them i that's the only issue that i would say is something I, we don't have any answer about in an emergency the legislature can do anything i won't go belabor it but there, there are cases in point i can provide to the tune of tens of millions of dollars where the state did not meet its obligations right um, so my concern so i guess my question is yeah we agreed to take the grant money but if we say, well, we want to rethink this, they can't make us take that money. We can say we want to do it another time, right? We're not obligated. Well, you, can can you can cancel the project and say no thanks. And they just, in the past, what they would do, they'd take that 150000 and put it into the next round for somebody else. We don't have, there's, there's no commitment beyond December 2020 for us to follow through and get the, those funds. Yeah, I just don't want to get us in a mess. Sorry, John, go ahead. Well, I think we should, if we got a, a critical project like the George Road project is, that we get that done because there may not be monies available going going forward, uh, FY 2022. Right, uh, that's the other side that's of the coin. I think it's going to be more realistically the case. Well, and, yeah, and again, so any, grant, any future grants that I apply for, we may not have any chance of getting because there'll be no funds for them. And that, but... If we have one in the pipeline that uh, literally is based on funds from existing, you know, existing treasury numbers, then I think it makes sense to go ahead. I can talk to Shauna about the what can happen, but my sense is the state wants to get these infrastructure projects done because they're essential. So with that, if I think it makes sense to talk to Shauna. We don't have to decide tonight whether to go forward with the project or not. We can think about it, see how things go in the next few weeks. And we can change our mind or not. That makes sense? Cliff, I, I can see Cliff shaking his head, Sharon shaking, Rose. So it looks like we're in, a, in agreement to get some more information and keep it out there. And if we decide to change our minds, we will. All right, um, Sandra, did you have more to talk to us about budget-wise? Uh, two things. We, at town meeting, the voters approved two loans and the bank is putting those loan documents together. So the process would be that the hard copy would go to the office and someone authorized by the board to sign on behalf of the board would sign that hard copy. Wait a minute, John, John's gone. John, are you there? Yeah. Oh, there you are. I'm here, I'm turning the video off because I'm gonna go use the men's room if that's okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Denise. <laughs> he didn't raise his hand. No, he didn't, he didn't ask permission. Remember so the little the permission copy... slips you used to have to go down the hall? I remember. <laughs> Now, now they just show their smartphone thing, but no. Right. Um, so whoever's authorized by the board to sign on behalf of the board will sign the uh, hard copy of the loans, leave them for me because there are things, there are documents in that package that the treasurer will have to sign. So I'll get my copy digitally, print off those pages that I need to sign and sign them. And when I come in on Thursday, I would consolidate the paperwork and then drop it off through the tube along with the deposits Friday morning. And this probably will not happen this Thursday, which is, I believe, the end of the reconsideration period, but probably by next Thursday. So I would ask the board tonight if they would um, pick a person uh, or authorized by motion, someone to sign on behalf of the board. We'd need to be able to show that to the bank. And that, so, um, you don't need to do that while I'm here, but at some point at this meeting, we need an, author, an authorized signer. We do have the first bill from RB Tech for close to $8,800. And I would really like to get those loan proceeds so the two, so tell us the two loans are for the server and the chipper. Wood chipper. So that brings the second question. There was a rumor of a petition for reconsideration uh, of that wood chipper argument, uh, um, article, 
pardon me. And then COVID-19 reared its ugly head and it feels like that petition died somewhere out there in, the thought, in someone's thought process. I think Cliff might know more about that. Yeah, as far as I know, the individual I spoke with is not pursuing that option. I, yeah, we should still we should still wait until the thirty day time period goes by, which is thurs, Thursday, right? Right, and we won't have those documents until Thursday. They need you know they need seven to ten days to pull them together. So yeah. it's close enough to the end that I'm getting them moving on those documents, so they'll be ready when that reconsideration period is expired. So and if we, if, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead, John. Um, we're not looking to take out the loan in advance of buying a wood chip, but we're going to take it after we find one and figure out what the price of that is, right? Um, that is not what you told me in the first place. You said you wanted to get the loan proceeds available so that you could buy the chipper early in the season, like now, because the best deals were now. Right, but, okay. And um, you the order you know, of events thing, is this, is this different than a typical loan? I know when, for instance, I, if I buy a used car, I, I, I find the vehicle I want, I then contact, for instance, the credit union, and within a, a day or two, I get my loan. Is this different? Is, is this much more complicated? I mean, we have the pop paperwork ready um, and then file it after we find something. The reason is I, I, I don't want us to take out a loan and then us to decide based on the continued unrolling of the COVID-19 uh, scenario that we might not, it might not be prudent to do this expenditure. I mean, things have changed since town meeting for at least in my mind. I, I'm, I will have to say, I'm not sure that you're going to, I'm not sure that you can, it's, it's an easy answer that voters voted that. So now it is part of the budget and it would be part of the tax effort. And I think we would need to talk with Jim about that since it is, if assuming the petition for reconsideration is not presented, um, it's an expenditure authorized to be made. And I imagine you don't have to make it if you don't want. The question is how then does that affect the tax rate? Because right now it is gonna be added in. So it's what? So, so if I'm understanding what you're saying correctly, Sandra, is the, board, the town authorized us to borrow the money. So you think that by doing that, we can't not borrow the money and not I, buy the uh, I, I, I don't I think that the select board has complete authority over its budget but it by but I don't know what latitude it has in terms of articles and I I just don't know the answer to that and I I don't want to guess it's just an issue that has come up in my mind mm -hmm. the other thing is as I said if you're not going to take that loan um, then it, I mean, we built that, that loan by virtue of that vote is built into your tax rate. So I, it may still have to be built into your tax rate, whether you spend it or not. I, I, I just don't know the answer to that. And you want to be careful with that. I don't think you have to buy the wood chipper tomorrow and we can hold off on the loan, but I'm not so sure that you can ignore that article. John, I, you wanted because to it's very specific. I don't know the answer. So just ask Jim, because I think he would know that answer. Right. So John, you wanted to say something? So, so, so it's an authorization, as Sandra said, to purchase a chipper. And let's just say we couldn't find one. Yes, the, the taxpayers would be taxed. Like we, again, a budget is, is a best guess, as Sandra has told us, reminded us uh, numerous times. Um, and we didn't anticipate this state of the emergency, which is really what we're in. Um, and, and also I, I've gotten some more information I can explore 
but it, it I, I've, I've been told actually by Doug Lilly, who you should all expect would have called me after that chipper vote, which he did. And we finally got together on the phone and I will be calling his son Brent shortly, who's like the operations manager, field operations manager at Washington Electric. And he, according to Doug, grain of salt, um, he said that Brent said for a hundred bucks an hour, you can get a three man team with a chipper and they would do all the work and our highway department would not have to do the work. And if you look at, if that's true, that is much less than we, it would cost for us to have three guys at, you know, say $30 an hour with benefits um, and a piece of equipment getting beat up and, you know, degraded. Um, to employ that with our own crew, a chipper with our own crew would be much more costly than a hundred bucks an hour. So I wanted to at least explore that. And if there were a cheaper alternative, at least in this interim period um, until next year to see where we come out of this dilemma, I, I, I am really concerned about, uh, Tim Ash has said he's looking at, I think a $200 million shortfall mm -hmm. in our budget. And I, I think there's more information out that shows that it's going to be worse than that. So. I don't know where this is going to leave us, and and I just think it's 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 going to compound already existing problems. I.e., that that's why I asked about the the up the uptick in our our property tax taxes for everybody based on the school budget this year and the transfer of uh, East Montpelier's debt obligation to other towns, including us. Um, I, I I just the sum total of this starting to really hit me in the head. And I, I just want us to be really measured as we go forward in, in this time, that's all. I would, I would propose that we don't have to take out the loan right now. John could collect more information. We could post the question to Jim and have that information and discuss it at our next meeting. I think that's a good idea. You need to find out if a specific article such as that one demands the purchase, or if the select board has the authority to decide that it is not prudent to make that purchase and therefore ignore that article, and we don't build that first payment into the FY21 budget or tax rate. But I, I, and, and I don't think you have authority well, I don't know, but I, I don't know that that gives you the authority to buy it in the next fiscal year because it was voted on in this in this fiscal year for fiscal year 21. You see what I mean? How long does that authority last? Does it last? That's a lesser issue, I think. Yeah, so, but you need to know back. the answer to that. I, I think you need to know the answer to that. That because that is most definitely a legal question. And if you don't have to buy the chipper and you think it's not prudent, then find out because we wouldn't want to add that money. It's not a large payment amount, but you still wouldn't want to add that money into the tax rate if you don't have to. And so it sounds like is the rest of the board in agreement on waiting and getting more information? Sharon's a yes. Cliff? Yes. Rose, put your thumb up or down. Thumb up? Can't hear you. Okay, good. Got it. <laughs> the new age of communication. I love it. All right. And then I think we also wanted to talk, Sandra, about um, tax sales. Yes, we have two tax sales scheduled currently for April 28th. The tax sales were precipitated by the no, no payment, no communication of 2018 taxes. They have nothing to do with our existing situation. However, because there also was no payment on 2019 taxes and no communication, uh, the 2019 taxes were added into the lump now, I, I just don't think we can have a tax sale under the current situation. And I asked our lawyer if it can be moved deeper into the year. She says it can. You're talking about um, Gloria. Gloria. So I think that um, 
to be on the safe side, I'd ask the board to make a motion to move the tax sale to a date mutually agreeable by the tax sale attorney and the delinquent tax collector, because I have to be there in June um, to give, you know, because I just don't know if we can gather. Don? So, so my internet's dropping in and out, and I, I, I keep Sandra's lovely face on my screen, but I lose her voice. So, can't hear me. If she could fill me That's back. That's perfect. In, my husband just... would love that. <laughs> <laughs> Whose husbands wouldn't? <laughs> so, Sandra's suggesting. Can you hear me, John? Yeah. It's so weird. Sandra's okay. suggesting we postpone the tax sales that were scheduled um, next month to a date that is mutually agreed upon by Gloria and us to sometime in June when we have a better handle on what's going on. And because these have to be done mostly, I guess, face to face, um, it doesn't make sense to do it now in the current environment. If we wait a couple of months, it's not gonna, it's to the taxpayer's benefit, for one. Um, and it gives us more time to sort out some of these other issues. John's a thumbs up. Where did you get that little thumb up thing? It's under the, there's a reactions bar. Oh, is that uh, what that on the is? Bar in the very far right reactions. Oh. There's a smiley face, but I'm only given two options. That's because. And I can do a hand clap. I don't get a smiley face for some reason. I don't know. Because we can see your smiling face. I only get two as well. I, I don't know if there is a smiley face. I've never, there may be just those two. Hey, Cliff, are you good with waiting but we, but we need a motion so would somebody like to make a motion to what i just said okay let's make the motion second i'll second it okay um we have to do a roll call vote okay all those in favor cliff aye Aaron? aye rose rose aye john aye, aye. and i'm an i Okay, um, anything else, Sandra, you want to chat about with regards to treasurer stuff, delinquent tax collector stuff? Sandra's dropping me again. You got to press your button. Can you hear me? Now we can. I will have the bank not prepare loan papers for the chipper. Correct. All right. But we need but to will, prepare, they, we need the loan papers for um, the, server. the server. So we need a motion for that so that I can sign for, on behalf of the board. Yeah, and that and that's it. As long, uh, if you could make that motion to authorize a signer on behalf of the board, that is, that's all my business. Is there a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion. Uh, I would move that we authorize the chair, Denise Wheeler, to sign on behalf of the board uh, after the board votes on uh, an item um, subsequent to a, a board vote on, on any particular item. So on any particular item, including this loan? Correct. You need to mention the loan, I think, for uh, banking. Including the loan uh, that we just voted to uh, the server loan. Server. Server loan for okay. this down office computer system, correct. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second that. Okay, is everybody ready to vote? No. No, no, no. Are we saying, so John, if I understand your motion, we're authorizing Denise to just sign anything that we approve without discussion about how about it. I, I feel like that's overkill and I would rather approve things with Denise's signature on a case by case basis. Well, we've already, you've already authorized me to sign off on the warrants. Um, right. I understand and, that. And we have this loan. I don't really think there's really anything else. Uh, well, I I, I'm I not think. sure. I wasn't clear on how, how broad John's motion was. Well, it was, it was as broad as our vote. I mean, uh, it was, it, it doesn't make it, it really would have the same effect as, as yours. 
as what your your concern is sharing concern that okay we, so uh, it, so it, would, we're, it wouldn't happen unless we voted an item through and then we voted through with the understanding that denise would do it because we're not meeting right so i'm not signing anything until i have board approval it would be subsequent to a board vote on any particular item that's what i said this is just in this interim period but we can do it that way too it doesn't matter we can include it in each vote yeah I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna okay, go around right, signing any. Right. I'm not gonna go around signing any loan or anything without first getting board approval. Well, that's not what my motion speaks to. My motion speaks to, my motion speaks to uh, authorizing the chair to sign on behalf of the board after a, a vote, a motion, and a vote on any particular item. But uh, if, if Sharon wants to change it, that's a friendly amendment. It has the same effect. That's fine with me. Either way. So, Katie, so, Katie, can you read back the motion? You got to unmute yourself. She's not muted. Yep. Um, let's see. John Brabant moved to authorize the chair to sign on behalf of the board, subsequent to the board's vote, including the server loan for the town office computer system. That get us to where you want to be. My motion was broader than that, but we can leave it at that. If that's what Sharon would rather see, it's fine with me. Yeah, that's fine by me. All right, so we need a second to friendly amendment. Second. Okay, and I think we have to vote on the first motion first and then vote to the amendment second. So your first vote. No, I, no, I adopted that as my motion. Oh, but okay, all right. But Katie would into the record is what I adopted as my emotion. Okay. So the second row seconded that, I assume. Yes. Okay. So Cliff? Hi. Sharon? Hi. Rose? Hi. John? Hi. And I'm voting aye. Okay, does that get you everything you need, Sandra? You got to unmute. Yes, it is. Uh, any, do you have any questions for me before I leave the meeting? No, are you feeling overwhelmed or overworked? Do you think if you are, I hope it, we can figure out a way to make it better for you? I really think it was a matter of setting up systems <clears throat> here that accommodated the new norm and those systems are in place. Um, RB Tech has um, been in my computer twice so I can create PDFs, whether I'm in my laptop or in the server. Uh, I know now I can work with Nimric as necessary. Um, we've. I think we have the scheduling, um, the safe scheduling of employees at the office just about uh, honed to a point. And um, I'm confident that that will actually formalize in the next 48 hours or so. Uh, money is getting deposited. Our bills are being paid. I have long-term projects sitting here that were on my list to do pre-COVID-19 in this March and April. So I'm okay. It's it's just now. I think it's, I think we're all, uh, there's a lot of information flowing at this point that we're all interested in knowing about. And I think that will slow down a little bit over the next couple of weeks in a certain respect. Yeah, so I mean, okay. I I, so, I'm I mean, okay. I'll tell you if I'm not. <laughs> okay. Well, I just want to make sure you will. I mean, there's so many unknowns, and I think there will continue to be a lot of unknowns, but I think we have a great select board, a great office staff. I think we all work well together. Um, it's a team effort. We're here to support each other. Yes, um, Ju Judy or Barbara, do you want to weigh in? Um. No, I feel very supported and I think it's more of um, Barbara and me and Sandra kind of working out the logistics of t time and space and and that that will that will be uh, clarified soon. Barbara, do you want to type a message? I think
think she's still there. You still there, Barbara? She's on. Barbara, do you want to type a message and let us know you're okay? Huh. Okay. I'll take that as she's an okay. Um, ladies, do you have anything else? Sandra, Judy? No? No. Oh, I'm Barbara good. just typed. Barbara just said, I'm good. So good. We're all glad everybody's good. All right, you want to move on? We have the um, CLG grant paperwork. Um, I'll let Scott. Good night, everyone. Good night. Get a good, a good rest. Good night, ladies. Good night. All right. Scott, do you want to update to the board about the CLG grant for East Callis? Sure. Uh, the original grant that we applied for um, was for 18000 in federal dollars. They had so many applications, they could only give us part of that, which turned out to be thirteen for the initial grant award. Then because of the uh, virus crisis, they canceled their annual uh, get-together about historic preservation, and that freed up some money, at least another 5,000. So they offered to restore the amount we had originally asked for. Um, so initially we were given 13. Um, we sort of adjusted the budget and decided we could live with that and accepted that amendment um, or that that is our original grant agreement. Um, what I'm asking the board to sign now is the amendment to that original agreement, which is just giving us an extra five, an additional $5,000. Yeah. So, so that would mean that the, um, the amount available for us to spend would be 18,000 and the match and in kind would go from about 9,000 to 12,000. And it's strictly in kind, correct? And again, as as I've I've had very good luck in the past with making almost all the match um, be in kind, not cost the town anything. And in this special case involving the the um, historic store in East Callis, the group that's um, trying to purchase the store has agreed to um, keep the town whole. So that there, so that the town won't be out anything for the match. Okay, and, that, and that will apply to this extra five thousand as well. Board questions. Anybody have a question, comment? All right. So sounds I'm just good. Say sounds good. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, Scott. Mm -hmm. Right, so would the board like to make a motion to um, approve receiving the extra funds and, let it, and having me sign the paperwork for that? Moved. Second? John seconds. Okay, roll call. Cliff? Aye. John? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Rose? Rose, you have to say aye. Aye. And I'm saying aye. I said aye. Aye, aye, aye Captain. Oh. Captain Kirk in the upper left hand corner. My, um, <laughs> yeah, my internet is going in and out. Yeah, I think my internet is going in and out if you don't hear me. Yeah, I think we're going to have to hurry up with this meeting because this is what happens, it seems like, after a while. These, thank um, you all. Thank you, Scott. Scott, before you go, I wonder if you would be willing to sit in a little bit longer. So um, we're going to jump into the IT update shortly, and I wanted to talk about the issue with town hall. Good. Yeah, we can we can skip the we can move the agenda items around, so Scott doesn't have to stay on any longer than he has to, unless he wants to talk about the quarterly meeting with fire department. Sharon, 
Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go uh, to a completely different point. I am still in my office, and as it gets later and later, I would like to get home. So what I'm thinking I'll do is uh, get off while you have four people and then jump back in when I get home for the end of the meeting and maybe a possible executive session. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah, provided you can get home before we're done. Right. If I don't, then um, I'll we miss it. Okay. All right. But, safe, safe travels. Yeah. Next time I'll have to start from home and I'm, I will make that clear to my family that that's how it's going to be. Okay. Thank right. you so much. Be safe. Okay, yeah. go ahead, Cliff. Sounds good. Be safe. Okay. Um, so basically, quick update for IT is number one, we, as you're aware, we have purchased a Zoom license. Um, in the next few days this week, I will be looking at the possibility of being able to extend, uh, partially extend usage and availability of the license to other committees, commissions within the town. The next step will be to run a test with the office staff to see if they can conduct a meeting using the tool without my presence um, and do a shared hosting thing without necessarily having to give full access to the Zoom tool. So I'll give you an update on that as we proceed. Any questions on that? So, so, so you're trying to find a least costly option to the original one? I'm confused a little bit. We have, uh, we have the license that's already purchased. We got a good deal that allowed us to save $30 off the cost of a basic license. We want to extend usage of the existing license to other committees and commissions related to the town. And we want to do it without, ex without incurring additional costs. Okay. So that's uh, just an FYI, and I will keep everybody apprised as we move along. Of course, if there's a need to purchase additional functionality in the tool, I'll make everyone aware of that as well. So the I second, guess I would like to see, was there a motion? No, no motion at this point. Okay, because I, I think this doesn't work too bad, but after about an hour and a half, it does start to get long and somehow connections seem to get weird but I, would yeah. I would I would like to be able to offer this function to other boards and committees um, Cliff do you have an idea how what the cost will be so that we can make a motion to approve it ahead of time well let me see if I can work out a no cost solution first I'm pretty sure I can do that oh, okay I really don't think that we'll need to. It's just a question of what level of functionality the other committees and whatnot will need. And at that point, then we have to um, get a quote from Zoom. Okay. Are we operating out of diminished bandwidth? Is that why we're getting noise and stuff? Uh, the bandwidth is a function of what everybody has available from wherever they're logging in from. Okay, but I, I didn't hear any noise previously, but it could be that I'm on DSL and people are sitting behind their TVs now and sucking it down, so. Exactly. It could just be a function of your connection and other activities that are going on. Uh, but whatever bandwidth is available, we will have the full amount uh, because there's no limit in terms of the license that we have with Zoom. If you had a super highway connection at maximum rates, um, you'd have full functionality. You can even have high def. That's the only thing I've done is I did turn off the high def for our meetings because I knew that some people would have lesser bandwidth. We really, we really appreciate all your technology stuff that you're doing. I don't know what you call it, but. Well, you're welcome. Help out where I can. So the next thing, any other questions on that before I move to the next thing? Oh, Rose <laughs> Thank you, Rose. Thumb up. <laughs> Thank you. Scott, Scott, do you have any thoughts on that? Are you good? Um, no, I think Cliff, is, Cliff has, has it well in hand. Okay. Thanks. So the next thing to be aware of is that um, on Thursday, Judy and I will be engaged in a remote Zoom-based meeting with RB Tech to start 
laying out the process of how the server upgrade is going to unfurl. It obviously will be more of a challenge under the new circumstances, but they have put us into the schedule and we'll lay out a timeline, expectations on both sides, and there will be opportunities to ask additional questions should they come forward. And of course, I will keep the board apprised of our progress as we move along. Sounds good to me. Any questions on that before we go to the next point? John's gonna do his thumbs up. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, <laughs> So this next issue is one I wanted Scott to stay with us. Um, as you probably are all aware, the uh, Wi-Fi zone has been re-enabled at the town hall. This allows uh, members of the community to get into the town hall parking lot and access the internet connection at the town hall. Um, I'm not sure if we're getting many people who are taking advantage of that right now, but the point that Scott brought up is in doing this, we should look at re-enabling our uh, firewall, which will help protect us from somebody hijacking the network uh, using the Wi-Fi at the town hall. It would also prevent them from accessing websites of dubious uh, claim and impact and content. And that's what we had before. Exactly. So what it is, is there, we were using a Cisco device as the, um, as Scott called it, the internet nanny there at the town hall. We have a license to access the service that is valid through, I believe you said August of 2022. Yeah. And um, was that paid for as a lump sum, Scott, or do you know if that's a monthly we bought a five-year license for roughly $600. Okay, so it was paid as a lump sum. So that's a sunk cost that's already behind us. We have the service. We just need the device that um, would allow us to access the service. The low budget answer is to use the device that was already in place. That device was purchased in 2014 um, and we could plug it in, it would probably function, it would probably update to whatever level of updates there are, but as a six-year-old piece of IT equipment, it wouldn't necessarily have all the robust functionality that's available in newer systems. To get the thing back up and running could be as simple as plugging it in and seeing if it's gonna work, but if that doesn't happen, then what has to happen is we need a, a certified installer who's recognized by Cisco to put in a functioning device. Time-wise, it's about two hours of a text time. And the device, if we had to buy a replacement device, it's probably gonna be in the range of $350. All told, we're probably looking in the range of $600 to have this done. Scott has a, a quote from someone I believe you worked with before, Scott, to do this. That's right. Uh the initial we we were offered a grant from Vermont Council on Rural Development, um, and they arranged it. They had they had been installing Wi-Fi hotspots all around the state. I think they actually did about sixty six of them. Um, this one we we the grant covered the hardware and the first two years of service, um, and that worked out fine when we unplugged the phone lines from the town hall so we could lift it, uh, all that. Um, we, we didn't have any more Wi-Fi at the town hall and everything sort of went on hold. Um, Toby has been able to get the, um, and John McCullough have been able to get the, the kind of raw Wi-Fi going again. Um, and that's a, a good service. But in my opinion, we, this $600 or so would be a good investment um, because it would protect uh, not just the town, um, but it would protect people, say young people using the system um, from inadvertently, of course, getting onto sites that we would not want to be responsible for them accessing. Um, I guess, I, I hope everybody knows what I mean by that. I won't have to 
Right, we know what you mean. Give examples. Um, I think I think it would be it, this would be kind of amortized over the next three three or four years, um, and in my opinion, it would be well worth it. All we'd have to do would be uh, call up Justin McCourt, tell him to do his thing, and he could have it. He could probably have it going by the end of this week. So this would be somebody different than RB Tech doing it. Yes, uh, Justin is an authorized. Cisco Meraki reseller, and he's got the equipment and the experience and the licenses ne needed to do this. John? So just for clarification purposes, the order of events would be to try the device that we have and see if it works and ascertain its level of functionality. If it either doesn't work or if its level of functionality is too low, we would hire Justin and if it's a not a, if functionality is good, he would make he would get that device up and running. If the functionality is subpar, we would buy a new, newer, great whatever newer ver version piece of equipment, and he would install that. So we'd be fun funding Justin to either install the existing thing, if it functions, if it needs his involvement to function, and if equipment's adequate, or we hire him to install a new piece of equipment, correct? Is that the order of events? Um, yeah, I think the, that is correct, John. What we would want to add to that is um, we're not sure if the existing um, device is even operational. So we could conceivably just try plugging it in ourselves without bringing Justin out at all. And that was the first piece that works. Yeah. And if it does, and if it does, then we don't need Justin? Well, if it does, we have to do some research and say, okay, is that going to be adequate? Uh, because knowing that it was purchased in 2014, um, a lot has changed in six years. And my gut to say off the top of my head, it probably doesn't have the same degree of robust degree of functionality you would get in the newer unit. Mm -hmm. Scott, maybe you can add to that. Well, it, and, and also, it has spent two years in the storage locker without power. Um, it's a pretty extreme temperatures. So it, I, I think the odds are about 50-50 that it wouldn't work at all. Um, and I do think we would need Justin here to do the install and make the connections to the service. Um, so in my opinion, we would Again, we would. I think we would be better off if we just went ahead and got the asked Justin to bring up the um, upgraded device. Uh, that would cost three hundred three hundred and fifty, um, and then use the and the, get the minimum of two hours of his time um, up and back and installing the device, uh, rather than have him come up and try to get the the one that's been in storage all this time working. Um, and I'm, I'm just not sure there's, we have anybody um, available to us right now who would, who could uh, do all the troubleshooting on the, on the old device. So I think Justin would be the one to do the install, whether it's the new device, the old device or the new one. I think it's also as long as he's here, we should probably get him to bring up the new one and install that. That would be my advice. Your your advice then is that we just go with a new one. Yeah. John? I, I don't understand it. I just want to understand, Scott, what what this entails. So by way of example, I stored a stereo receiver in a cold attic for 20 years and brought it in in the summertime, I didn't have to warm it up, plugged it in, it's been working great for the last eight years. So I don't think that affects electronics unless it's in a really damp place and things corrode. But is it complicated? Is this more than just plugging into the phone line and plug into the wall? Is there like login stuff that would be, is yeah, that- Yeah, it would have to make us- is? There would have to be a, some sort of secure connection to the Cisco server that 
um, mediates would would then mediate all the Wi-Fi traffic from the town hall. Okay, so it's not just you couldn't just go in and plug the thing in at the town clerk's office, our original device, see if it works. You'd have to do a lot more than that. Yeah, I think so. You'd have to you'd have to establish the connection, and that would take all kinds of passwords and protocols. And I mean, Justin would be the guy to do that. Okay. Yeah, what there is is it's like a series of uh, uh, testings to verify the communications are operational, verifying that the license is current, um, registering the serial number, and that's where the certified installer, um, that's why they get paid to do what they do. So Rose, do you have a comment? Rose? Rose? Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, sort of. Hi. Okay, go ahead. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I understand a little bit about how um, electronics can be temperamental. Um, and even if, you know, the storage conditions and whatnot, it was okay. The technology has changed so much since 2014. Um, and I think that we just need the best firewall protection, you know, that we could get. And, you know, like you said, you're protecting, you know, everything of the town or whatever. You don't want people to be not only on not okay websites, but you don't want them to be fishing around for anything that could possibly link them to our stuff in the town. So. I mean, I think I would be in favor. I think it would be money well spent if we went with a new one. So am I hearing a motion, Rose, that you would, are you making a motion to go ahead and just purchase the new one and have Justin from, I can't remember where he's from, but install it and just never mind trying to use the old one? Yeah, I'll make that in the form of a motion. Is there a second? I'll second the motion, this is John, uh, with the understanding that we would still try to use the old device at the town hall just down the road and see if that works. I, I just would like us to at least plug it in and venture, if not for the town office, but for the town hall. Is that what we're talking about, the town office, right? Oh, we're talking about the town hall. Oh, I thought we were talking about town office. Town hall. Yeah. The town oh. hall already yeah. has security. This is, the, John, just to clarify, this is for the town hall. The reason it's an issue is we want to make the Wi-Fi that's available right now at the town hall a public Wi-Fi zone for people who might need internet connectivity in the current crisis. I understand that. Yeah, okay. I thought it was, I thought you said the town office earlier. Okay. If I did, I apologize for that. Uh, one other piece of information I'll add here. Um, well, actually, John, we recognize your second, I guess, and this would all be other discussion, Denise. Uh, I did speak with RB Tech, and they confirmed that, yeah, typically this type of installation takes a couple of hours to perform, and the price on the new unit that we're being quoted is in the correct range. It's legitimate. So we have done diligence there. <laughs> All right, are you ready to vote? All right, Cliff. I, didn't, I couldn't hear you. I said I. I said I. Rose? I. John? John says I. I say I. Okay, anything else on IT? Katie, Katie has a question. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Katie has a question. Um, I had written John Brabant. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. I'd written John Brabant seconded with the understanding that the town would still try to use the old device at the town hall if it works. Should that stay as the sec as the um as kind of should that stay? No, that should not stay for clarification purposes. I'm sorry. I thought we were going to all this. I thought we were relocating this firewall device to the town office for people to park outside of to do their Wi-Fi. Gotcha. Uh, I misunderstood. Gotcha. So, so you can strike that 
second part, Katie. Okay, second thank you. Clarification. So the motion has been approved. Anything well, else? Thanks IT? for sticking around for that. That's all I got on IT. Okay. Uh, thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Thank you all. Thank Bye -bye. you. Good work. Bye. Okay, so the next thing is um, the quarterly meeting with East Montpelier Select Board and East Montpelier Fire Department would normally take place on Thursday, April 9th. The East Montpelier Select Board raised the question whether or not this meeting is necessary. The fire department folks weighed in and said they don't think that it is. Um, at some point, we are going to have to, we, we should meet, even if it's on Zoom, because we need to make sure we're being updated and we're aware of what the financial situation is at the fire department, how they're dealing with, and if they need any assistance with anything, given the current situation. You know, do they have enough equipment, respirators or masks? You know, do they have a, do they have a plan if half the fire department or the EMT folks you know, get sick, what are we gonna do? If there's, you know, what are we gonna do about staffing? So they would like to postpone it. Um, and I, I can see maybe postponing it for a while, but I think at some point, I would really like to know what their plan is. John? Yeah, I think it's prudent to do that now. Like I said, it's gonna peak in the next five weeks, according to Dr. Fauci at Al. Um, and Governor Scott. So I'd like to see where we are after that peak. And actually then there's going to be a decline. So it may be as far out. So um, as five weeks brings us to May's doorstep, actually into May. So I, I'm thinking probably wouldn't be till June anyway, that we would be able to have a serious meeting, possibly in person. I don't know how we would do a fire department meeting uh, and a joint select board meeting by video conference. I think it would be insanity. It'd be just too many people. Cliff, what do you think about the technology for something like that? Yeah, it's it's definitely doable. We would have to look at doing it in a slightly different venue. We might have to set up an actual meeting room, which our current license does allow. Um, what does that mean? There would have to be some some testing up front. You want to say that we would agree to postpone it for a couple of weeks but we really want to know I mean we could just ask them and they could send us an email or they must have something in writing as to what their backup plan is yeah Cliff. I agree uh, if they could at least um, apprise us of their current situation financially and if they have any concerns uh, given how things have changed uh, about where they see potential holes or areas that we might need to address? Um, right, I, I think we need to know, like I said, what if half the fire department and emergency ambulance people get sick? What's the plan for being able to still continue to provide services? That's my biggest question. Yep. Maybe they have something like that and we just don't know it. Rose? I would be in favor of, um, th you know, letting them know instead of meeting on the 9th of April, we're thinking more like May 15th. Um, their fiscal year ends June 30th. So we would kind of want to know if there was any financial things about them, you know, not making their budget or whatever that they saw coming six weeks before the end of the fiscal year. Um, and then as far as, um, you know, their contingency plan and whatnot, they're in really tight with this thing called the District 6, which is the, um, you know, medical operating district. And um, all those protocols and guidelines are all driven by the hospital and the District 6. And so um, they are like a real tight knit group. And so they make sure that all their ambulance and everything is all, you know, everybody is equal, all the information is equal. And, um, you know, I'm, I don't have any concern about that whole aspect of them dealing with this COVID. Um, as um, Mark Levine, Dr. Mark Levine said today um, at the news conference, locally here, 
um, we have had a couple of cases um, of COVID-19 people hospitalized. And right now we have just one patient at the hospital, um, not on a ventilator. Sharon, you're back. Yay. Um, Hi, Sharon. So we were just talking about the fire department meeting and whether we would agree to postpone it for a while. And I raised the concern about what is their plan if they suddenly half the fire department and half the ambulance personnel are ill or are quarantined because they might have been exposed. What is the plan to still provide services? And Rose, question. And Rose was just saying that they're in this district six, but still, I understand that they're in tight with this district six, but what is the plan? And I don't think if, if we don't, if we want to agree to postpone a meeting, I think that they can yeah, still. Yeah. And I, I couldn't tell you. I think they could still, we could request a written update as to what the plan is. Folks in agreement on that? And then we could agree to postpone. Yes. Meeting. Yeah, that's reasonable. Okay, so I can send out an email and ask them to provide at least the Callus Select Board with what is their contingency plan. I would think East Mount Clear Select Board would want to know as well. All right? Yeah, Sounds good. good. Yeah. Just going COVID-19 update from I don't know what that, somebody's got a TV or something, radio going, I can hear. Darren, you might want to mute, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't, I think that we're on top of everything. We've had good results from the survey we did. We've had good results from all the postings. And as we talked about earlier, Callis was held up as the model of what towns can do and should do response to um, this declaration of emergency declaration, what the CALS emergency management team has done, what the office staff have done. Um, we've had people offer, we've had more offers for help than offers of needing help. We have matched some folks up that needed help with folks offering help. So I think we're in good shape. Um, I, have, I have only heard positive feedback on the work that we've done and it's been a it's been a team effort everybody's jumped in and helped when asked so it's been really great any thoughts everybody's muted you guys ready to ready to move on okay um the issue of green update came on came up i feel like i'm talking to a wall but that's okay katie it, it suddenly got extremely quiet when you're talking. Is anyone else hearing that? I think everybody's muted, which is weird, right? I think Denise has got quiet. I, uh, Just, Denise got yeah. quiet in mic or something. Yeah, Denise's mic is experiencing some interference. There's a lot of hum, um, and the volume level is inconsistent, Denise. It's kind of what we experienced during the practice session. But we weren't able to isolate what was causing it. I have a feeling it's uh, it's probably the quality of our microphone. It needs better shielding. It sounds like EMF interference. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? It's, it's yeah, it's better. It's That's okay. better. Okay, maybe we can get through this real quick. Um. Green up day, we decided to postpone it from the beginning of May. I only heard one person request that we not do that, but I, the green up coordinators felt it was in the best interest of public safety um, and transmission of the disease to just wait until maybe fall to do it. So, so. I saw on, uh, oh, I saw on the news, um, I think that the state postponed it till May 30th. Um, I would be more in favor of doing it in May or June or July or August, but not waiting till fall. Okay, John? I agree with Rose. I, I think people are cooped up. We, live, we don't live in downtown Burlington, last I checked. So 
you know, I, I think people would like to get out in their neighborhood. They're not going to see many people. They're going to be picking up beer cans and beer bottles. That's what I'll be doing. And McDonald's wrappers, unfortunately. Um, I, heard, I heard Marky. Right, maybe, right, you know, make a place there's of, some kind of... There's somebody's TV or something that keeps coming on. Not, not me. Um, maybe we could have, uh, in lieu of having a formal green up day, if we could just say that there's a drop off place available for people to drop their green up bags at. Um, and maybe it's a month long green up and it ends in end of May, like Rose said. But I think people are itching. Maybe we could have the best green up ever and it, we would still be isolating. Um, but we'd get the town cleaned up and people would feel good about getting out of the house and doing something positive. I, well, I, can, I, can, I can ask the coordinators to um, do it on the day that the state has picked what you said was may something rose rose yeah i saw it on the news um and i don't know if it was part of um the governor's news conference but i saw the date may 30th may 30th okay well we can ask them to do it for may 30th katie are you all seeing that sharon's commented by typing into the chat oh she writes, in the summer, the grass is going to be high and we won't see the trash or find it. I think that's partly why we were talking about waiting until fall, because then um, we wouldn't have that issue. But we can see about whether or not they're willing to change the date to May 30th, and that would coordinate with efforts, sounds like, around the rest of the state. Does that make sense? Hello? Okay, Rose has got her thumbs up. Cliff? John? Oh, that, that's fine. Okay, Sharon, are you okay with that? Okay. Um, the only other thing I think we need to do is if you want to go back into executive session very briefly, because I think everybody's connections are getting weird. Do you want to go back into executive session? Sure. Okay, so is that a motion to go back into executive session, session to discuss personnel issues per our usual language? Yes, that's my motion. Okay, and Rose, did you second it? Second. Okay, all in favor? Yep, please. second. Everybody, Cliff, are you in favor? Cliff? Okay, thumbs up from Cliff. John? Yes. Rose? Rose, you need to yes. vote, please. Sharon? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right, Katie, well, Rose will get notes to you of exit and all.